This is the Louisiana Hometown Network, traveling the state to bring you the important issues and events. I'd like to introduce the Governor of the state, state of Louisiana, Governor John Bell Edwards. Police Jury Association of Louisiana, we are an association made up of all 64 parish governments, whether a police jury, a commission, or a parish council. We're celebrating our 96th uh, annual convention, and we have uh, about a thousand participants that are here this week, and we are doing educational sessions for them, we're doing ethics training, we're doing sexual harassment training, just a lot of networking between a lot of folks that are here, uh, a lot of newcomers as well. So local government, just like any other government agency right now, is just cash strapped, looking for monies. And unless you're a river parish, um, you, you, you live in day-to-day, -day basically. And, and so um, the fact that that's going on, uh, we, we're always trying to just encourage business and industry to come into parishes and, and just really just help, help each parish out in the best of what we can so that they can, uh, they can succeed. This legislative session, we will have our eye on a, on a few things. Industrial tax exemption program is, is definitely one of them. We uh, took a look at it last year. In 2016, the governor signed an executive order, giving some authority to parishes to be able to make decisions whether they would exempt manufacturing businesses relative to this program. Um, there's gonna, probably going to be an attempt to remove our authority or limit our authority, and so we'll be making sure that we fight on behalf of local governments to make sure that we continue to have authority as far as this exemption program goes. We, fear, we feel that a, a government agency knows best whether they should be able to exempt a business or not, whether they can afford to exempt a business or not, and we want to be able to continue having that. It's our roads and our bridges that's getting torn up, and we've had some issues where I don't know whether they've been following through with what they're supposed to do. We, we have a company that comes in and they may have replaced a computer 10 years ago and then 10 years later they want to go ahead and, and get another uh, exemption, but it didn't bring any more jobs. So we know what's going on in our parish and the state is so large, sometimes stuff like that gets through the ringer. But we're, we're small enough, to, the school board, the sheriff, we know what's going on in our local government and I think it's a good program for us to continue to monitor. It's the local economy. It's um, ITEP is a major, major deal that local elected officials, we see it all day, every day. And we've got good people down in Baton Rouge who represent all of our communities, but we have good people in our communities who represent only their small area of the community, like police jury, city councilmen, stuff like that. And, and I've heard some of this about this potential ITEP dilution um, on the state level, and I just that can't happen. The local, it's, it's our local economy. Our local taxes are the ones sending down to Baton Rouge. You know, I, I just, I think everyone, it, it should be required. You, you serve in some form of local government at some point in your life. You just, because you just, you see what you deal, what we deal with on a daily basis. Local involvement is just the major thing because between police jurors and county commissioners and everybody else, we are the ones who have to put it down for ITEP to come in and accept it. So, I, but I think ITEP is a very good thing. It's very important, and, and I am honored to uh, serve on that board appointed by the governor. And I am very much concerned about that because I thought it was a great idea to have local governors decide if you want to give up some of your taxes. Because we are at the ground, on the ground, and we are actually suffering from, from that, kind of, uh, uh, that kind of activities. Not having us at the table is very, very important. We want to appear industry friendly and we want to have incentives that we bring the industry to our parish. So um, I, I mean, I, I'm in favor of the ITEP program. I think we should give the industry a break and so we can lure them to the parish. But uh, I understand some of the citizens' concern that they're thinking that this is a way for industry to avoid paying taxes. So I think that maybe we need to educate the citizens on what the program is and the benefits of the program. Uh, but yeah, I, I, I do think we need it. It's a needed program. The ITEP program has been particularly important to St. James Parish because the local involvement in being able to, to dictate somewhat on a local level what our needs are and we can bring better monies to our people. The industry is very important to St. James Parish. It provides roughly 70 percent of our budgeted income and with, the, with that income level we're able to provide uh, large amounts of goods and services to our residents. ITEP is extremely important to local governments. Um, 
you know, these applications that have come before us since the governor's handed over control to the locals really should fall in the hands of the locals because the tax dollars are our local tax dollars as well as, you know, any expansion that's applied for is right under our noses in our constituents' backyard. So the input that comes from local government should be first, should absolutely be first. What has industry meant to St. Charles Parish? St. Charles Parish is industry and industry is St. Charles Parish. Um, Industry is the reason that we've had such a hefty tax roll for years and we've had great schools and we've had good safe sheriff's office to you know support and maintain our infrastructure and our safety and all those good things. So the tax roll really depends on the industry that's, that's in St. Charles Parish. So we've been blessed to have it. We really have been. It is very important that we have a seat at the table for a local attempt to allow us to have a voice there to get the government and anybody else involved to understand what our needs are and how important it is to our parish. We also, too, have a lot of uh, problems in revenue sharing, trying to get revenues in our parish. We lost all revenue, so this is very important. This is a great step forward and a great step by the governor to put, allow us to be a part of this. So I'm just hoping and stuff that we can be there at the table to do what we have to do and voice our opinion on things that need to be done. And, and, put some plans, some ideas in place for our local parish. Nobody knows what goes on in our parish like we do. Years ago, we didn't have a, ch a choice on ITEP. ITEP was something that, you know, was decided by the state. The uh, Commerce and Industry Board would, would pass it on and the state would sign off. Now we have a seat at the table and the rules have changed a little bit. And it gives uh, the, the parish, the sheriff and the school board you know, a, a voice at the table whether to exempt those taxes or not after you see what type of uh, facility they want to bring in, into your location. And so uh, you get you get to vote on it. Now, it has changed to where you're getting 80 percent uh, deduction instead of the, the whole 100 percent, you know, so that at least we get some money. But the, the thing about these uh, industrial projects, they bring a lot of sales tax dollars in that's, that's much needed, give us a big bump in. in so. Um, I think ITEP, we like having a voice at the table because we could address things that we had when those people are sitting down at the table and, and we having a voice that we could talk about the, the improvements in our streets and in uh, our traffic or, you know, just safety stuff, even talk about local hires, you know, we and so I like being sitting at the table with those guys. Glad that the, um, the governor put it back on the parish's responsibility to determine if um, a manufacturing company will be able to get a tax exempt program. Um, you know, it's a win-win for, for that company and it's a win-win for the, for the parish in which they're sitting. Because if that company does not do any type of upgrades, then there's no money to, to even talk about. And so with the upgrade, some of it is already taxed. They're only asking for a percentage of that to be tax exempt. And so that money helps the community, it creates jobs, and it, and it helps the economy. The issue of cybersecurity has come to the forefront. It's not if it's going to happen, it's pretty much when it's going to happen to you. And so the state has been very, very good about reaching out to us through their governor's office of homeland security and emergency preparedness and asking parishes to, to build their systems uh, with firewalls and, and changing passwords and making sure that they're as, be, as best secure as they can be. But I'm telling you, it's a, it's, it's a scary situation when you walk into your office one morning and everything's shut down. But the state is also helping us uh, financially to send people in when something does happen and, and try to get those computers up and running again. But we've, we've heard, heard horror stories from parishes that this is happening too. So we're just going to continue to work with GOSEP and, and get the word out to our parishes that this is something that's serious, that we need to take it serious, and that uh, if we don't, you'll have issues. Well, we're unfortunate. We're one of the parishes that, that was attacked. Uh, luckily, we had a good program in. It took us about a half a day to get our system back up, but it's very important. It's, it's here. It's, it's attacks all forms. State went through it not long ago. The Bossier Parish went through it. Uh, we've got the Cyber Industrial Park in Bossier Parish. Uh, it's a big thing on, on for us to educational because that's the future. Of, cyber is the future for, the, for this country. Uh, whether it be coming from China or Russia, we need to have people trained to be ready to step in and take over for uh, the generation that doesn't know anything whatsoever about technology, but cybersecurity is very important. 
we had an attack in our parish. Washtenaw Parish School System was attacked. Um, my father was actually on the Washtenaw Parish School Board 24 years, and he had just finished his 24th year when this happened. And I, he, he actually called and told me. He said, hey, Scotty, I'm not on the jury anymore. I mean, on the school board, but did you know Washtenaw Parish has been attacked by cybersecurity, you know, malware I said had no idea you know he was the first one to let me know about it and our Homeland Security guys called me and said hey we're on it the state's enacted a state of emergency the governor and everybody's involved state police and it was just kind of a didn't know anything and then all of a sudden hey this happened schools are locked down their systems and it's it's a big deal it's a much larger threat than most people realize and uh, we just heard from James Wascom um, with the governor's office of Homeland Security here today and he gave a good presentation on cybersecurity how to prevent it or be as best prepared as you can and uh, it was a lot of good information that we got today and I'm actually he, he offered to come to the association and, and kind of put a small group together and do some more in-depth conversations and I'm looking forward to that uh, that's that's a cybersecurity affects everyone every he, he mentioned st. James Parish who their whole tax collection system got shut down I mean that's that's a big deal sometime prior to the 23rd of July uh, probably through a fishing incident uh, uh, school districts uh, began to get uh, ransomware notices uh, starting on the 23rd of July. It took a little, a day or two for us to uh, to get notified. Uh, we quickly, we had about an 85% plan uh, solution for a response plan at this time because we'd been working on this uh, a little before. And that's the template we used to, to get after this. He talked his boss, Colonel Reason, and gave him a helicopter. He flew up to to Manny and uh, got in there and was able to extract some evidence and bring it back to the state police crime lab. Uh, and overnight, they were able to identify what particular virus it was and more importantly, the indicators of compromise so that we could get out there and get ahead of this thing and prevent other school districts from getting uh, infected or encrypted. And so you see there, we were there five parishes affected Literally, we had to rebuild most of those parishes' networks from the ground up. Um, that's why prevention is, is so important. Uh, I like to use the old Fram oil filter commercial. I'm dating myself now. You can pay me now or you can pay me later. But if you pay me later, it's going to be a lot more expensive. So I would tell you now that the key takeaway for you folks is to invest in cybersecurity. Uh, I got a couple of slides at the end. I'll talk about cyber insurance. But, uh, you know, if you, there, are two, there are two types of folks, those that have been infected and those that will be infected with some kind of virus. So um, can't, can't, uh, can't emphasize that enough. You can, you can see their ransom attack summary, the St. Landry Parish School Board. Uh, you can see how many computers we had to re-image, had to rebuild the networks. Um, 11 city entities, we had one uh, um, rehab hospital up here in North Louisiana get, get hit. We had to go in there. Uh, that uh, The cost projection there is a little dated. We're now up to National Guard's up to about a million dollars they've spent and uh, OTS is about 1.5 million. Again, that's not a, that comes out of their budget. We have to go back to the legislature and ask for a supplemental budget request to pay for this. We got hacked and uh, what we need to do is try to come up with some solutions and some some programs to try to help the uh, rural parishes with, when it comes to cyber security. What kind of a problem did that cause in your parish? Well actually we had to shut our computers down and uh, we worked from cell phones for a couple of weeks and we're still not back up right now. So it, what they had us to do was shut all our computers off and not turn them back on. I'm very concerned, and matter of fact, uh, we're addressing that. Our um, emergency preparedness people are actively um, looking for ways in which we can prevent that because, you know, our data is, is confidential and we don't want it in the hands of, of people who would exploit it. So we're very concerned about that and we are taking steps to protect our, our security, our data. Right next door to St. Charles in New Orleans, there was a, a pretty big breach and scared a lot of us. Our administration took a really proactive approach to this and we've actually got an in-house cyber expert at this point on staff. So we're not contracting out. We have someone there daily to monitor to make sure that we have all precautions that we need to keep our you know, our information safe. Cyber security is very important for our parish and other parishes also too. We did have our school board get attacked 
uh, with a cyber uh, virus uh, just recently, and we worked. They worked through that, and our local uh, government uh, facilities also was attacked by cyber security. So I think it's very important to put an effort into protecting our cyber, uh, our internet uh, system, and all those things that are affected by cyber, uh, by these uh, attacks that's going on right now. People, identity theft, and everything getting stolen is a very big one. We as an association have been on top of it and has been informing many parishes, all 64 parishes throughout the state of Louisiana, about things they can do uh, to protect themselves from cyber. Uh, it's a very big issue. That's one of the major things. Infrastructure is very important for Bosha Parish. Uh, matter of fact, I think it would be at the top of the list of priorities that we look at for Bossier. At this time, uh, our bridges are very, very old. Some of them are over 50 years old. State Department has come in and they have load limited some of them. Actually, we have bridges in our parish in South Bossier Parish that are actually closed down that we can't even use them anymore. Uh, the parish does not really have the, the money needed to repair these bridges, so they're going to stay shut down until we get, you know, funds. And you know, we're trying to look at different ways that the parish can get funds through the legislature uh, to get some of these bridges repaired and and back in use because causing a lot of problems with the citizens who live in the parish having to go around, uh, puts miles on their vehicles, cost them gas, and cost them money. They also have issues with roads, uh, especially again in South Bossier Parish areas where it floods. Uh, we're very prone to flood in Boja Parish and our roads have stayed underwater for weeks at a time which damages the, the surface structure and, and the bed, uh, you know, and uh, we end up having potholes. We have roads that actually we're considering uh, if we don't get monies for these projects that we may have to turn these roads back to gravel roads, uh, something that we don't want to do and the citizens don't want to do it, but uh, without money to repair roads and bring them back up to today's standards of those highways, that looks like what we may have to turn to. The roads, the, the bridges, and, and uh, just you know, trying to get those things fixed, a lot of those state roads that come through our parishes, and you know, just trying to keep up with the, uh, the, the, the growth, and uh, the, the roads are getting in really bad shape, the state roads within our parish. In, in all of the parishes throughout the state of Louisiana. And, and during the meeting, we, we talked to several people trying to get bridges replaced, and those bridges are old, and, and some of them are, are, are being derated as the, the, the weight they could carry. And so uh, it's, it's just a problem that the state really doesn't have the money to address all of those issues. But hopefully we can find some mid-ground to where we can hopefully get some of these things fixed. But traffic and road conditions are probably some of our biggest issues. We always want to maintain the funding that we receive back from the state as a parish, which is road transportation funds. Of course, everybody has problems with roads from the federal government to the state to parishes, so we want to see that kept intact. Here lately, it's been an issue with uh, water. We have a lot of flooding issues. Uh, and it's not just uh, our parish, we are looking at uh, parishes uh, throughout the state. So that's a really big issue and uh, we're working on that watershed initiative and hopefully between uh, us and the, and the government we can, we can get something done. Well, in our area it's roads, roads and roads. Uh, we are the huddy hole of the Hayesville Shale. Uh, we have as many wells as all the other Northwest Louisiana parishes put together in the Haynesville Shale. And of course the trucks do a lot of damage. You know, we work with them every day, but the truth of the matter is there's only so much money in the pot. We have a $250 million asset that we need to take care of. And any kind of partnering we can do with the industry or the state of Louisiana or the Federal Highway Administration, we need to do that to get our roads fixed for the citizens of the parish. Something important to local government right now is central sales tax collection. Um, I think this is almost a broken record. We've talked about this in years past and it's still an issue. Um, and I think it's still an issue because there's still work to be done. There's still some groundwork to be laid to really figure out the process. Um, we just want to make sure that the locals have a hand in this and we'd like to continue to maintain our tax dollars if possible. But you know, we know there's still some work to be done to figure out what system's going to work best for this. In the past, we've had some issues We're getting when the state computers went down and they had to send out checks, there was a little bit of problem getting funds to local government. And we've done a good job when Bossier City collects our 
our revenue and disperse it out. No local government has to wait any length of time. Now, I have no problem with the state centralized sales tax collection if they can get all the problems worked out. So if an issue hits up, then we don't have to wait in North Louisiana for the check to come in to help pay our bills. Another thing that we'll be working on is uh, we currently collect severance taxes for oil and gas extraction in, in Louisiana. That severance tax is, is capped right at about, it's $850,000 of a cap with a CPI built into it. Uh, so parishes are receiving around $975,000 a year right now. The state's collecting a lot more money than that. Uh, we passed some language constitutionally in 2010 to allow us to get an increase of about $2 million. However, there was a trigger put in on it saying that oil and gas revenues in Louisiana would have to meet a certain uh, expectation before that trigger would be kicked in. We'll probably never meet that trigger. Ga oil would have to be about $140 a barrel. Natural gas would have to be extremely high. And so we're going to try to see if we can remove the trigger and share more severance taxes with parishes. Uh, we just feel like we deserve it. And, you know, the oil and gas industry uses our roads and infrastructure to be able to pull their product out. Uh, we ought to be able to get a, a little bit more of a fair share on that. So that brings me to the announcement that I'm excited to make today. And I, I chose this meeting of the Police Jury Association of Louisiana intentionally to make this particular announcement because I know that it will impact so many of the places that you call home and your constituents. When I'm finished with this speech today, I'm going to sign an executive order creating the Governor's Advisory Council on Rural Revitalization. And this will be a statewide coordinated effort to invigorate our rural communities, ensure that all people across all 64 parishes have equal opportunities for success. And I am very happy to have with me today my longtime friend and the biggest champion I know for rural Louisiana, former state senator Ben Nevers. And he will be the chair of this task force that I'm creating. And I want to thank you, Ben Nevers, for taking this role on. And I look forward. I look forward to the work you're going to do over the next year and beyond. The rest of the council will be comprised of a, ride, a wide range of designees from state agencies, elected officials, and relevant coalitions, including the Police Jury Association. The council will begin work by focusing on a strategic plan that will be presented no later than January of next year. And we're going to address everything from broadband and infrastructure to economic development more opportunities for apprenticeship, dual enrollment. We're going to continue to make sure that the economic development project wins are spread across the state of Louisiana. You know, just yesterday we announced that E.I. Williams Industries will create 100 new jobs in Webster Parish with a $700,000 capital investment. For rural communities, relatively small investments like this make a tremendous impact and actually can have a bigger impact on a small rural area than some of the largest economic development project wins elsewhere. So I'm really excited that in 2017, we landed the biggest and best economic development project win in our state's history. It's on Poydre Street in New Orleans, 2,000 direct jobs with DXC technology. But I'm equally excited about the 75 jobs we're gonna deliver to Lake Providence, Louisiana, in East Carroll Parish with Epic Piping out at the port because those jobs are going to an area that needs them the most. And so this is going to be our focus over the second term. The rural communities are important to our state. The people who make up those communities are important to us all. And this council is going to work to ensure that we have a well-rounded approach to breathing new life into rural Louisiana. NACO's been working with the FCC and Congress to create more accurate broadband maps across the country to decide where broadband funding is needed most from the federal level. In service of this, NACO created the Test It app, that's spelled T-E-S-T-I-T -T, if you want to download it from the App Store, to create a system where you can click one button and it will show you your upload download speed and that information is coded with your location and sent back to a national database. That way we can work with federal regulators and lawmakers to show where broadband funding is actually 
needed. Without the use of tools like Testit, the FCC has to rely on self-reported data from telecommunication companies, and NACO's been working to make sure that we're providing more accurate maps and calling on regular regulator regulators to use more accurate data. So if you haven't used and downloaded the app now, I'd highly encourage you to download it, and as you move around your parish, click the button so that way we can get the most accurate data from across the state of Louisiana. What is the outlook for a particularly rural Louisiana? Um, we are definitely working on things to make sure that rural parishes and counties from across the country um, are supported at the federal level. A lot of what we do here is educational and so we're going to have educational classes dealing with everything from agriculture to wildlife and fisheries to roads and highways. We have a lot of new members here and uh, you know a guy might have come from private business. This is the first time he's ever elected to any political office and so we try to train them up in the way that they should serve and we want them to be successful. We figure if we can get a successful police juror or a council member or a parish president at the end of the day the residents going to benefit from that and so we spend a lot of time trying to educate folks to be able to do it the right way. Our workshop today uh, dealt with emergency management. Uh, as you know, there are a number of newly elected officials uh, from, from the parishes, so we want to make sure we get the message out uh, dealing with emergency management and what uh, the Governor's Office of Homeland Security and Emergency Preparedness uh, is, uh, is designed to do and designed to assist them with. I would say be prepared. You can go to our website, getagameplan.org, uh, and download uh, all kinds of uh, different information about uh, preparation. We have a preparedness guide that helps uh, not only uh, local officials, but also uh, individuals, businesses, uh, even there's one even for kids. So you can go to our website and look at that. Uh, the other thing is we, we're, you know, we're there to assist the parishes. We have no other reason for being. So uh, any information they need on preparation for uh, the 11 different types of disasters we've identified that Louisiana has faced, uh, we're there for them. And that's why we're here today. Our workshop today uh, dealt with fire protection and EMS. It was really a good opportunity to have a, a candid discussion with these local elected officials on number one, the roles of fire protection and emergency services in their community, uh, giving them a good understanding of how they can support those efforts. You know, there are a lot of challenges from fire ratings uh, uh, to, to getting your, more volunteers in your department, the hiring of firefighters, a lot of great uh, things happening in our state. But these local officials are the important people to it because they have to understand it, they lead it, they give it vision. Uh, so we had a lot of good conversations on how we can better recruitment and retention. We talked a lot about the fire ratings, how they can improve their fire ratings, and we talked a little bit about economic development. You see, what a lot of people don't realize is uh, fire protection and, and those services play a big role in whether people want to build in communities, as well as affecting insurance rates in those communities. So we talked about how the fire marshal's office could come in and help them, uh, maybe where they have departments that need assistance and getting policy and procedures, maybe needing assistance and trying to find grants for fire stations and fire trucks. And, and, and moreover, what the fire marshal's office does every day uh, in opening buildings, uh, you know, getting buildings open safely and being that person who makes sure that these buildings get into commerce for a quality of life. Uh, so that was kind of the crust of what happened today. A lot of great information. You know, one of the most important things I get out of these opportunities is I'm able to give these officials my, my business card, which has my cell phone number on it, so we can collaborate real time when they have problems. That's the job of the state. The job of the state of Louisiana is to support our local government and, and the fire marshal's office is just very proud to be able to do that. The primary purpose for us being here today is to educate the, the, the elected officials on the purpose of the criminal division of the attorney general's office. What we're going to go through is the structure of the office how we operate the office. Uh, we're also going to discuss some of the legislation that Attorney General Landry hopes to push through this legislative session with the support of all the elected officials. Tell us, what, what message do you want the uh, uh, local government officials to understand about the criminal division of the AG's office? Well, if we look at the function of the Attorney General's office uh, in totality, we are the state's law firm, first and foremost. We are the largest law firm in the state of Louisiana. We have seven different divisions in the, the every I think a lot of folks think that the criminal division is all we do but there are a lot of other aspects of the law that 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 we handle uh, for the citizens of the state of Louisiana from civil lawsuits to dealing with boards and commissions and also dealing with with crime fighting as well we had a, a conference on the parks 
about the private-public partnerships and sharing information, what can we do more to bring people to the parks and then enhancing the communities that the parks are in, looking for private-public partnerships and new things that we can create to drive more tourists to the parks, and also listening to the local leaders, what can I do better to help promote their community uh, where they're from uh, through tourism. For the first time ever, we have three state parks making money. Numbers are up 20, 30 percent in many areas. And uh, as we continue to improve and add new things to do, those numbers are going to continue to grow. We're just getting started, and I'm excited. Our educational workshop today dealt with energy and environment. Of course, I'm the DEQ secretary, and when anything that deals with the environment, I'm, of course, always front and center. So what I try to do is especially talk with local elected officials about, first of all, funding uh, avenues. I talked a little bit about our state revolving loan fund where you can actually come in and it, especially if you've got a shovel ready project or you can upgrade your wastewater treatment system. Uh, we have low interest loans that start at 0.95 percent. Uh, that, is, that is almost two or three percent uh, lower than you can get on the general market. So right now we have over half a billion dollars in projects with 54 municipalities. I also talked about some of the legislation that we'll be looking at uh, as we move forward uh, to the session starting uh, in March. I'm going to look at some fees that the department needs. Uh, we are a non-state funded organization and so when I do need uh, operating funds I have to go to industry and target certain areas and I'm going to do that uh, in this session. Also I'm looking at some enforcement penalties uh, that I'm looking to right size. EPA has a $47,500 a day maximum. I'm going to match that. And then I just talk about overall air quality, water quality, and anything that may impact human health and the environment in the state of Louisiana. The workshop that, that I'm attending today to share, uh, share with the police jury is kind of a story of uh, what it, uh, we're doing at Wildlife and Fisheries when it pertains to all of the police juries. We own a million and a half acres of land throughout the state. And a lot of these parishes have WMAs, uh, wildlife management areas on them, and certainly we want to uh, express to them how important that is in, in their areas of, of, of what they govern. Uh, another big uh, issue that I want to touch base with them is, is the funding uh, issues that we're having uh, in wildlife and fisheries and what that possible effect is going to be on the police juries. So we want to share that with them so that when we go to the legislature and look at uh, some new ways of uh, funding sources for wildlife and fisheries, we can get their support to help us with that. Uh, our workshop today was a, uh, discussing a DOTD uh, on a high level view of what we do, of our responsibilities, our roles and responsibilities, and giving an insight on the major projects that we have ongoing. The Watershed Initiative is a collaboration of five state agencies that the governor has put together. Uh, we're receiving 1.2 billion dollars of HUD funding uh, as a result of the 2016 floods and uh, we're going to be using that money to build projects to help mitigate flooding on a watershed basis. And what potential does this have for Louisiana? Well, it, uh, we're going to be able to uh, hopefully lower the water surface level in a lot of areas. Uh, we're going to be able to make people aware of uh, low areas, uh, to, to stay out of low areas, uh, potentially to change uh, higher standards to, across the state uh, for, for building uh, uh, roads and, and, and homes uh, to keep them out of floodways. The message today is about what is happening in agriculture, what is going to happen in this year. You know, as we are now putting all these trade deals together, more coming in every day, the increase in productivity, also the tremendous amount of infrastructure development, how that all ties together to get our crops to the market, better prices for our crop, and greater economic prosperity. Also, in addition to that, you know, we have the presidential plan for rural America, agriculture and rural prosperity, and there's also going to be one from the state. The governor's putting together a rural task force, uh, and they've asked me to serve on that. So we're going to be working to revitalize rural Louisiana, and a lot of that's going to be done through our natural resource-based industries. Louisiana. Agriculture and forestry and aquaculture is the largest industry in Louisiana. Wealth begins with the earth. So the natural resource-based industries, of which this is the largest sector, you add to that mining and minerals, oil and gas, right? That is the foundation of our economy. This is where it begins. Our workshop today, we, uh, we're, we're discussing all of our programs, which includes uh, multifamily, single-family housing, 
community facilities, wastewater, uh, sewer, uh, all of the, the things that help a community to operate. Uh, you know, we have money. We have great programs that can help these communities, particularly the rural communities, uh, get back and prosper. Well, if you, if you can't uh, have the, the basic uh, facilities in your community, you can't be there. So, you know, our, our role is to help these communities become uh, whole again. A lot of them have aging water and, and wastewater facilities, and we like to go in and we work with them to get those back up to speed. Our workshop today talked about the vast improvements we've made in health care here in Louisiana under the leadership of our Governor John Bell Edwards. So today I'm going to talk about Medicaid expansion and the lives of 456,000 people. Uh, it has improved. We're going to talk about some of the initiatives we have successfully implemented for persons with developmental disabilities, our aging population, as well as behavior health. What kind of uh, success have you seen in these areas over the last several years? For developmental disabilities, we were able to eliminate a 30-year waiting list. For our aging population, we were able to reduce that waiting list by over 75 percent, as well as bring reform as far as quality uh, supports to our nursing homes, as well as to transform our behavioral health system. Everywhere I go, people ask me, why don't I ever see you promote Louisiana? Well, that's because you're already here. So I'm going to share with you three short commercials this morning that we use through social media. We don't have enough money to go on TV in other states, but we're able to target these commercials and several other ones and see the response of how many people it drives to our website. So uh, enjoy these three quick 30-second commercials. This is a hat. You can get one anywhere, but today you're in Louisiana. You forgot your favorite one at home, of course, so you got this one and some change. You gave some of that change to the band who got your two left feet to dance, and a few dollars to a man who typed up a poem just for you. You saved the rest for a dozen fresh oysters and a Sazerac, one to feed your face, the other to feed your soul. The hat, it's your new favorite, because today you're in Louisiana. This is a shrimp po' boy. It could just be a sandwich, but today, you're in Louisiana. Today, you got up with the sun to enjoy the best bass fishing on earth. Today, you walked to store calls where ghosts might pay a visit, but spirits are always present. Today, you wandered into a hole in the wall cafe and fed your soul with a frosty local brew and this shrimp po' boy. Anywhere else, it's just a sandwich. But today, you're in Louisiana. This is a ticket stub. You'd normally toss it out. But not today. Today, you're in Louisiana. Today, you took a face-flattening high-octane airboat through the marsh and ended up back in the time of dinosaurs. Today, you savored seafood that hadn't crossed state lines. Today, you danced till your soul felt good and your souls ate. That ticket stub, you took it away as a reminder. Because today, you're in Louisiana. Now, this is something that I'm very proud of. Uh, I went out to California to speak about all the veterans we have and the high rate of suicide with veterans, and the Endowment for the Arts gave out three grants to three states. We were one of them to do art therapy for veterans. I came home and I had no idea what I was going to do. I have absolutely no talent. I can't sing. I have trouble turning the radio on. But we have an incredible team of people. We've got a therapist, a, a, a songwriter, and with the help of Colonel Strickland, we've got some veterans in each area of the state that were suffered. We got them in a room and they wrote down all the things that were bothering them, the pain, the suffering. And then they put it in a song. The first song was so great, it's on its way to Nashville to be recorded. And, uh, but more importantly than that, one young lady they interviewed said at night, when she heard so bad inside she can't sleep, and she won't call her family and friends, she can now tap her phone and know she had a part of making something so beautiful and makes it a little easier to go to sleep. Um, it has been so successful around the state that the Endowment of the Arts came in. We did a, a whole day uh, at the Mint New Orleans. Four generals came in. Um, every branch of the military was there to talk about what we could do more. And I believe this year the Endowment of the Arts is gonna, gonna commit millions of dollars to doing this all over uh, Louisiana. I'm gonna share a short video with you. There's no words to explain 
all the guilt and all the shame. Thank you all for being here today. This is a special day uh, for me and, and for our team that have worked so hard on Songs for Survivor. We started with working with underserved populations in Louisiana for Arts, and Veterans is one of our largest underserved populations. So as we were going through thinking of things we could do with them, uh, we came up with the idea of doing a song, veteran songwriting workshop. We did four of those. Uh, we did one in Baton Rouge, we did one in Lake Charles, Alexandria, and Shreveport. Uh, we had three, three songs come out of those workshops. We are survivors. We are fighters. We're here for the broken, for the pains unspoken. We found, as we were going through this, uh, Americans for the Arts contacted us uh, about doing a military, arts and military summit. Several states have had conversations and dialogues about this, but we're the first state to actually have a summit to sit down and bring all of the arts practitioners, humanities, elected officials, as well as arts organizations and humanities organizations together in one place. It takes leadership to lead, and I think in this particular point in time, Lieutenant Governor is providing that leadership and enabling the community throughout the state to provide that service to the military men and women that so vitally need it. So this is personal to me. Um, it goes way back to my father being a Marine uh, and to the way I was brought up in, in honoring our veterans. This helps, this helps males, females, no matter what age group, we've had all ages, to find a common bond to be able to share experiences in a safe place to where they feel good, they feel supported, and it, and it gives them an avenue, the arts give them an avenue to move forward. I know the healing has begun Every time these words are sung But those memories of that time Stands with a stillness in my mind So I guess you had to be there Guess you had to be there. Guess you had to be there like me. Now I'm going to close with our video. Louisiana is known around the world as a place to feed your soul. Lucky for you, you're already here. That's why you should stay in this weekend. Hit the road and enjoy a close by, far from ordinary staycation right here in Louisiana. Celebrate at one of 400 plus festivals honoring everything from fiddles to frogs and beignets to boudin. Discover the great outdoors right in your backyard at one of 19 state parks. And find a few surprises hiding in plain sight along scenic trails and byways. So get up, get out, and reacquaint yourself with the one-of-a-kind culture the world can't get enough of. After all, it's yours. Visit louisianastaycation.com and stay in this weekend. The value of these educational sessions that are offered are amazing, and it, they've grown over the years. It's just all day yesterday on Thursday that I don't know how... I don't know, 15 or 20 different educational sessions were run. You can go learn about cybersecurity, which which is imperative right now. Um, they had this information on infrastructure, logging, waterways, just so in the things that really affect our local economies and our local people. And, and they're just, they're invaluable. Some of them um, I could sit through for five or six hours. Most of them are an hour long. But the, the information you gather, it may take you years as a police juror in your seat to kind of get your feet under you and figure out what's going on, what the issues are, because there are so many in our parishes, but you can come to this Police Jury Association event and in one hour get as much information that you may not, that you would have gotten, but may have trickled in over a couple of years because maybe in Washtenaw Parish we don't have an issue that they're having in St. James, but I can come sit here and hear something and say, I had no idea, but now I'm ready if that, that comes up. You know, roads, water, ditches, 
that is the main calls that I get as a Washtenaw Parish Police Chair. We have so many more hats we wear as local elected officials, but uh, I, I'd venture to say all 64 parishes would tell you it's, it's roads, ditches, drainage. That is by far the most phone calls I get. So the transportation committees that met and um, the roads and the people from Baton Rouge and DOTD, I talked with uh, Sean Wilson from DOTD, he was here. You know, we this association brings in all these state leaders who, who we go to. You know, you often hear their names or we get letters in the mail from DOTD saying, hey, th this is coming to town and we get the letter and we see it and we think, you know, well, maybe I ought to go to that. But when they actually show up here and you can meet them one-on-one, -on -one, I called him at dinner the other night and said, hey, we need to talk. I've got questions about Arkansas Road in my district. And it's just the, the communication interaction that you get at this Police Jury Association is second to none. You learn something from every conference you go to. Once we, the first time I came 12 years ago, I sit down on a couple I didn't really understand, but as I come every year, each time I make a classroom a, a speaker, it's a new program that's come out that we can take back to our parish and utilize. I mean, it's whether it be solid waste or environmental security, whatever, we've got we got programs that we can take. The state puts a, has a bunch of good people down there that brings information back to us. We've taken a lot of use out of the uh, uh, our water and sewer districts in Bossier Parish. And it all came from making a conference down here to where we knew where to go get the fun from. I've been around for 12 years and it has helped me tremendously on the local level, coming and getting educated on things. And actually it's uh, more than the education uh, activities, the, the networking with other areas, other parishes with, with similar activities and similar, similar issues and things that you have in your parish. You kind of find answers and that's an education in itself on how to get things done, what you have done, and then those people are here, those agencies are here, and you can actually get to talk to them face on face, one on one. There are some issues that, um, that are, are are prevalent and re relevant to our parish that I'm going to enjoy taking back to the parish. Um, they they centered the the convention is centered on the problems that we face in our community, and they have programs and um, conferences. At the conference, they have sessions that are geared toward helping us to improve our parish. And there's drainage, um, there's uh, community development, recreational type programs. So it's programs that are instrumental in um, the way that we're going to govern our parish. Well, as a newly elected parish president, this very useful information that we're learning here at this convention that I can bring back to my directors and my, my local government so we can implement the new thoughts and the new ideas to be able to be very productive in representing our people. It's a lot to learn. We have different speakers that come out uh, from different parts of the government bodies, uh, like agriculture. Uh, a, lot of, a lot of our parishes have farmers in the area. They learn about the new laws and new uh, things that's put in place that they help them along the way to get the funding that they need, to help the help that they need during their uh, planning seasons. Also, you got uh, communications. Uh, you got the community development department, which I chair that department. Talk about different programs available with rural development, money development to build. Uh, you have uh, the um, criminal justice department where our attorney general come in and speak about the new laws that's protecting us and about the things that he's trying to do to protect us with the cyber, cyber security as well and uh, other issues that protect us and uh, deal with local government. You know, so those are the things that we come here to learn, not to play, but to learn. And most of the guys that's here uh, now that's new, I encourage them to go to all these meetings, go to all these sessions to learn and make them a better juror, make them a better uh, servant. So when they go back to the parish, they have knowledge, they understand what's going on around the state, understand where these fundings are, understand how to uh, network with other parishes. You know, this is what this convention is all about, to educate those uh, elected officials to let them know what's available to them. I think they're very, uh, very important because anytime you're dealing with education, that's going to be a plus for education. To educate our young folks and even some of the old folks is always a plus in my opinion. So I'm happy about the, the things, the way things are moving forward in that area. It's, it's very informative. Um, this, this is where a lot of the, your local officials will get their, their education, their knowledge in order to serve for the next four years, or actually annually, because we, we have this every year. So this is where they can get some information, they can do some networking with other members of other parishes that might have already seen a problem that they might be coming up to. 
So it's a good way to have the sessions and also in the networking of just talking to people in the hallway of just getting information. This is Women in Politics. This is our flagship meeting at the Police Jury Association of Louisiana. Um, it's a new meeting that we've added to the agenda. This is a very loose agenda here in the meeting. We're going to have some networking time for the women of politics to get to know each other, exchange business cards, to really begin relationships for when they need each other through the years. To me, the message right now is that it is time for women to lead. And these women are given a, a unique opportunity to lead in this environment, this political environment, and to, to start to you know, to continue really, but to start to make meaningful change toward improving life in this state. I think women can tend to be more policy oriented instead of just political animals. And quite frankly, I think that the way that we can move this state forward is through policy and doing things that are data driven and that makes sense. And I'm enthusiastic for this wave of women that they might move in that direction. Just to level the playing field, um, from personal experience, I sit on the St. Charles Parish Council, and this term currently, we have six out of nine elected on our council that are women. So we've got a supermajority for the first uh, time in history. We had a majority last term, but now we have a supermajority. And we've just seen a lot of things move forward. Um, women aren't afraid to step up as much anymore. And, you know, we're, we're multitasking a little more than ever. So I think it's just a level playing field. It's, it's a new age. I think that we need more women involved, having been one of the women who uh, became active when I was 19 years old, when women was not popular at that time. So I'm out recruiting women to get in politics. Having worked on the admin side for 10 years and then running for elected office, I think the most gratifying thing is being able to help people on a daily basis. And I've seen more women uh, be able to do that over the years. We've had an increase in St. Charles Parish of um, six out of the nine council members are women now. Um, so it's been great to see women step up and um, fulfill a role in a, a more public manner that they've traditionally um, done at home. Our company does a lot of work all over the state and we've learned that more and more in each parish there are more women that are now becoming part of the council and we just feel it's really important to reach out not just to councilmen but also to council women and just we provide grant management work and just to see what we can do to help them to grow their their district in the area. Find someone in your community that you can use as a role model as a mentor and you know just it takes actually just to be brave and to forget sometimes about the things that you're scared of. I came into this terrified of fundraising and, and now I'm kind of walking into um, positions now in my post legislative life that involve a lot of fundraising. So it's just encountering your own fear, leaning into it and get over it. I will now swear in the board of directors. So everybody with the exception of Mr. Scotty Robinson, would you please stand? But raise your right hand and repeat after me. I, state your name, do solemnly swear that I will support the Constitution and bylaws of the Police Jury Association and the Constitution and bylaws of this state and that I will faithfully and discharge and perform all the duties incumbent upon me, all the duties incumbent upon me, as state with past president, according to the best of my ability, according to the best of my ability, and understanding, so help me God. Congratulations, brand new board right there. All right, uh, Scotty, won't you come give me a hand? We, as a, an association, have been very, very honored and, and uh, appreciative of the service of our, our president, our former president now, Mr. Glenn Benton. So we want to, special, we want to uh, give this to him as a special recognition for what he's done. This man has done a, done a phenomenal job over the last year through some pretty, pretty tough situations, and, uh, but has done it with class, has done it with integrity, and he's a man that we can always call a friend. And we look forward to you being a past president. But we have this 
a token of our appreciation for you, Mr. Mr. Glenn. We're excited to have a uh, new leadership. Uh, Mr. Scott Robinson will be serving as our president from this time moving forward. And uh, we're excited that Ashley and, and Scotty will be spending the next year on the road helping us support what we do. So, Scotty, repeat after me. Hi, Scotty Robinson. Hi, Scotty Robinson. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear that I will support the Constitution and bylaws. That I will support the Constitution and bylaws of the Police Jury Association. Of the Police Jury Association and the Constitution and bylaws. And the Constitution and bylaws of the State of Louisiana. Of the State of Louisiana. And that I will faithfully discharge. And I will faithfully discharge and perform. And perform all the duties incumbent upon me. All the duties incumbent upon me as president. As president. According to the best of my ability, according to the best of my ability, and understanding, and understanding, so help me God, so help me God. Congratulations. As a police chair, we wear a whole bunch of hats. Y'all all know this. A lot of y'all here in the audience too. You you know we do. But roads, ditches, and drainage are the most common phone calls. I would say we all get at the risk of speaking for everybody. And uh. I've never had a person call me and tell me about a Democrat or Republican pothole, ever. <laughs> you know, it's just, it's people and they need help. What we do is just so nonpartisan. And, and he's right, no one ever asked me when I got elected, hey, are you a Republican, are you a Democrat? It's just, hey, where you're from, glad to have you. And that's, that's how we always are up here. It's, there's no party lines. When we flooded in 2016, the floodwaters didn't stop at Republican or Democrat doorsteps. It flooded everybody and we all came together and worked. And uh, this board and this group does that. So I greatly appreciate, again, y'all having faith in me and letting me serve here. And uh, Mr. Ben, excellent job. And thank y'all very much. The resolution in memoriam. Whereas the members of the Police Jury Association of Louisiana with great sorrow and a deep sense of loss take cognizance of the absence of our fellow members that the association does hereby pay tribute to the memory of Manuel Escalon of Caldwell Parish and Patricia Pratt Pat Brister of St. Tammany Parish and does hereby express for its members and citizens of the state their sense of gratitude for their countless achievements and contributions to the public good and their local areas and to the state and be it further resolved that when this association adjourns its 2020 annual convention, it does so out of respect and in memory of departed colleagues. If you wake up in the morning and you go wash your hands in the sink, nine out of 10, it's the local government that's providing the water to do that. The sewer system itself, nine out of 10, probably local government to do that. You get in your vehicle, you start driving down the road, you're probably gonna pass down a local, ro local government road. You may get to a stop sign that was put up by a local government employee. So when you really start to think about what we do on an everyday basis, we are the government that's closest to the people because of that. And so people need to recognize that, that cities and parishes are the, the, the people that get it done on an everyday basis. This has been the Louisiana Hometown Network. If you would like more information, please contact us.